If you just Google Wolfram, the, I think the first thing that comes up is wolframalpha.com. It's the free version of, I think they make Mathematica, but it's sort of a free, a limited version of Mathematica. But it will do almost everything that we'll need, that you don't need the full version of Mathematica to do uh, what we need for this class. So that's a good site. It will help you with your homework, but just to warn you, if you use it too much, it will actually end up hurting you because you'll start relying on it and you won't have it for uh, you know, your quiz and your midterm. So use it if you're stuck or if you're wondering why does something not uh, go right. Isn't there a, there's some, there's another really useful website that will actually solve equations. Math what? What is it called? Mathway. So if you haven't heard of Mathway, that's another good one. I think there's one that even you can take a photo and it will turn your photo into steps to solve it on your phone. Is that Mathway? Yeah. Okay. So that could be useful too. And they do show some work too, right? So Wolfram doesn't really show work. Oh. We'll do that. Is it worth it, do you think? Yeah? All right. So, so two people say it's worth it. So maybe it is. I'm sure you can find a demonstration somewhere online before you go and commit to it. All right, let's look at the sum to product. So we're going to start. So these are sum to product. Or no, we'll do product to sum first. We'll do the cosine first. So on this, I want you to use the sum difference formula for cosine and then do your best to simplify. So use sum and difference. For cos, then simplify. So do that right now. See how, it should be very obvious what the first step is. I think they're written out exactly with A and B on your, sheet, your uh, note sheet right there. If you don't have your note sheet, hopefully somebody sitting next to you has it. You can just look on their, on their cheat sheet. If not, it's probably about three or four pages back in your notes at this point in time. I'll give you another 10 seconds and then I'll race you to the most simplified version. And we'll see who wins. So you should get your sine A, sine B minus sine A, sine B adds up to zero. 
so they cancel out. And then you got two cos A cos B, so the two is going to cancel the half when you multiply. So you just got cos A cos B. So any questions on that simplification? And then I just rewrote what we started with on the right side. So that's our identity right there that I put in the box. So that's exactly where that one comes from. And we'll do the same thing, but instead of the plus, and instead of adding these together, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with a minus in the middle. So our next one will be, so the algebra will be almost exactly the same. So this is cos A minus B minus cos A plus B. So I'll give you a 10 second head start, see if you can expand and then simplify. Just make sure you're careful with your negative signs. The so cos A cos B cancels the negative cos A cos B, but sine A sine B minus minus, so it's really sine A sine B plus sine A sine B. So you got two of them, multiply by half, you got one of them. So there we go. So any algebra questions on what's happening here? It's probably some of the easier algebra steps that we do. So the last one we're going to do, we'll have a sine and another sine instead of a cos and another cos. So we'll start out one half times uh, sine a minus b plus sine a plus b. So make sure you use a sine sum of difference. Don't use a cosine sum of difference on this one. So this last one, pretty much exactly the same. Just other things combined and cancel, and that's what you get. So there's our two equations right there. All right, so that was sum to product. Now we're going to go, or that was product to sum. Now we're going to go sum to product.
So we're going to use, well, first of all, in this form, can I use the uh, sum and difference formula for cosine? What do I have to do before I can really use sum difference formula for cosine? I need to have it written as angle plus another angle. It's almost written like that, but not quite. So what I'm going to use is this uh, rule of fractions. We're going to unadd the fractions. So we're going to go like this. So I'm going to take our sum in the numerator and write it as two fractions added together. So we get 2 cos a over 2 plus b over 2 cos a over 2 minus b over 2. Now I'm worried this is not really the way I want to go. Yeah, we'll just go this way for now and see if we can get to where I want to go. So this looks pretty ugly. Why is this going to get worse than it actually looks right now? It's my second favorite F word. Factor number one. Foil is number two. All right, so we, I want to multiply these, but unfortunately it's thing minus thing times thing plus thing. Now it would be wonderful if they are conjugates, wouldn't it? It's a little tricky to see. There's a lot going on, but are they conjugates? You've got cos a over 2, cos b over 2, and then look at the first terms, cos a over 2, cos b over 2. Second term, sine a over 2, sine b over 2, sine a over 2, sine b over 2. They are conjugates. So foiling is actually easy, easy-ish, because our outside inside terms are going to destroy each other. So there's not going to be, it's just first squared minus second squared. So we get 2 times so it'll be our first one squared. So I'm going to write it as cos squared alpha over 2. And then cos squared, oh shoot, I switched to Greek. And then A. Oh, I'll erase the wrong thing. Cos squared A, cos squared B over 2 minus sine squared a over 2 so I think from here it's going to get even a little bit worse so let's try a different route so this is starting to look really bad let's try a different approach and hopefully we'll be able to uh, use a different approach and things might look a little nicer. So if I don't break it into cos a plus b, cos, or cos, a sum with cos and a difference of cos, 
what other identities, looking at your identity page, could I use here to change the form around? Half angle, we got our angle over two. So we're gonna look at our half angles and somewhere, so I'm looking at, I get cos. So cos theta over two, so I'm using the, it may use a different variable in your notes. It'll be plus minus, So I'm a little worried about the plus minus. I think that might mess us up a bit. Oh, there's one plus cos, not cos theta, geez. Cos A plus B. So I'll bring the plus minus out to the front. And now we have, I'm gonna split the square root. So the square root two, square root two, cancel the regular two. So square two times square root two is two, so we're dividing by two there. Unfortunately, these are almost conjugates. Actually, not even almost conjugates. They're not really conjugates at all. So this is gonna go way worse before it gets better. So also bad. So let's start over again. So my notes don't have how to do things, they just have what to do. It's way more exciting that way. Also, you get to see me mess up, which hopefully is fun for you. And, and more importantly, teaches you what to do when things don't go your way. Basically, you back up, start again. And what I'm doing each time is I'm trying something different. So theoretically, I'm not making mistakes because you're all watching. Although I think that happened two classes ago and nobody caught it during class, but theoretically, I'm not making mistakes. We're just going down roads that will probably be very ugly before they get to where I want to go. So now we're going to have to think a little further outside the box because I think on that formula page we pretty much exhausted everything that at least looks like, uh, looks like this form. So what I'm going to do instead, we'll do the same first, let's see, we'll do the same first step we did before, the, the very first time. Are the product of some formulas on your cheat sheet? No? Okay. So let me rewrite one of the two. Which of the three formulas that we just made, which one does this look close to? So we got cos angle plus angle times cos angle minus angle. So look at the three that we wrote down originally. 
Is it like one, two, or three? It's certainly not three. Three is filled with signs. So is it one or two? So we got cos with the plus and then cos with the minus. Ooh, and they're multiplied. So, oh, it has to be one. There's really no other choice. Yep. I was looking on the wrong, I was looking on the right side, but obviously they're not added. So that's not gonna help me out. I need to be looking on the left side. So that narrows it down real quickly. It's number one. So I'm gonna rewrite that down here. So this is what we know. So we have cos A, cos B. I'm actually going to use the Greek letters cos alpha, cos beta equals one half times cos A minus B plus cos A plus B. So one thing I can do is, if I multiply it by two, that makes it look a little more similar. So I'm gonna start by multi multiplying by two. So we got two cos alpha cos beta equals, now that one half's gone, so we just get cos alpha minus beta plus cos alpha plus beta. And I think I said alpha and beta before, but I wrote A and B. So let me write alphas and betas in here. It's a beta, yeah. Beta. I mean, there's a fish called a beta. And if you're a leader of the pack, you're an alpha. And alphas and betas. Okay, question. What is alpha? It's not quite A, it's got A in it. So what I circle is it needs to be the same thing. And I'll put a square around the other thing that's the same. Do you see how those match up? So what's in the circles need to be the same, what's in the squares need, or rectangles need to be the same. So those are gonna match up. So alpha is A over two plus B over two, and beta, A over two minus B over two. So now I'm going to actually use this identity I probably will need more room. So let's actually instead, let's figure out. Now I'll just write it out. It's going to be, I'm going to skip a couple lines because I'm going to need, I think, a lot more space to write this. So now I'm using, I'm going from the, uh, from the left side to the right side. So this is going to be cos. Actually, I'll write cos alpha minus beta plus cos alpha plus beta. So now I want you to substitute in our alpha value and our beta value, and then hopefully you'll get some nice cancellation and things will look really nice in one or two steps. Oh, I'm running too far on the left, so you, it looks like os, but it's really cos. The screen cuts off on the left side. So if I don't like pull the page over, you can't see the COS, you just see the OS. But.
So at this point, it's relatively easy algebra simplification. Just be careful with your negative signs. It'll cancel out. It'll be really nice. So that's pretty simple right there. Cos B plus cos A. So it's not going to get much better than that. And that is, we started with 2, two cos A plus B over 2 times cos A minus B over 2. So there is our identity. And of course, we know uh, addition is commutative. So if I want to keep things alphabetically ordered, instead of cos B plus cos A, I could write it as cos A plus cos B. I'm going to switch the order of those two. Yeah. Uh, somewhere. So I use the identity directly over here. So I, my original identity that I used had a half in it. but what I started with had a 2 on the left side. So I wanted to get, instead of having a 1 here, the invisible 1, I wanted to have a 2 there. So I just multiplied by 2. So it looked just as similar as I could to what I started with. So because you're going to look back through your notes, go ahead and cross this stuff out so you don't spend time looking at it. Not that it's wrong, it's just it's sort of static. So that didn't work either, so cross that out. Also, if you're doing your midterm and you realize you just wrote down a whole lot of stuff that's not helpful, you could sit there and erase, take your time and erase. Uh, but if you erase more than a couple times, you put a hole right through your paper. So that's not good. Also, is it faster to erase or just do what I did? Do what I did. What happens if you erase and then you run out of time and you can't come back and finish that question? I'm not going to read your erased writing. However, if I see something crossed out and I see, oh, uh, you know, you did some, you did some algebra correctly, and all this stuff is correct. It just didn't take me where I wanted to go. So you'll still get some points for this if I ask you to simplify or use identity. So it's still worth points, but if you erase it, I'm not going to try to read your erased writing. Uh, generally, if you cross it out, it's going to reduce the point significantly than if it wasn't crossed out. But I'm not going to, re I'm not going to read what you erase. And the other problem is then the student who sits at your desk afterwards knows you had a tough time because there's all the eraser shavings everywhere. So we've got two more of these to do. So that was the first. So we'll start with minus 2 uh, sine alpha pl plus beta over 2. Oh, we'll go a plus b over 2. And sine a minus b over 2. So this is pretty similar to what we just did. The only difference is it goes sine, sine. There's a negative 2, but I'll just be a negative sign in there. That's not a big deal. So I want the, uh, form the same formula, but I want to go sine times sine. So we're going to look at the one that goes sine times sine. Hopefully there's only one. Um, there's actually two. So I'll just go with the first one. And we'll see where we... So we'll go with the first one here. So we got sine a sine b equals 1 half it's 
So I'm going to use alphas and betas. So we got sine alpha sine beta equals one half cos alpha minus beta minus cos alpha plus beta. So instead of just multiplying by 2, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So it looks just like the negative 2 sine times sine. So we get negative 2 sine alpha sine beta equals. Now I could write, I'll just I'll put the negative sign here and then we'll distribute it. So we get cos alpha minus beta minus cos alpha plus beta. And I don't like to have too many negatives, so I'm going to distribute my negative sign. So the second term is going to be positive. So I'm going to write that one first. I like to put my positive terms first and then negative terms second. So we got negative 2 sine of an angle times sine of another angle. So we're going to use this formula. The only question is, what is alpha and what is beta? And this should be a lot easier to answer this time around. What is alpha? Not quite. Getting warmer. There we go. A plus B over 2. So our Alpha is that right there. And our beta, just like last time, is that second angle right there. So I am now using this form right here. So we got negative 2 uh, sine alpha sine beta is cos alpha plus beta minus cos alpha minus beta. So from here, you can simplify. Well, you got to substitute in alpha and beta, and then go ahead, and things should cancel out really nicely to what we had first time. It will be very similar. So go ahead and finish this off. So the last one I'm just going to write down. We're not going to go through it. There's really two last ones, uh, but we'll write them down in the same. I'll write them separately. 
So it's sine A plus sine B. equals to sine a plus b over 2 cos a minus b over 2 and the last one sine a minus sine b is 2 sine a minus b over 2 cos a plus b over 2. And you can absolutely do these on your own. Uh, because these are products of sine times cos, and the other one's sine times cos, you will, if you want to prove them, you're obviously going to use sine a times cos b. So you've got to use the sine times the cos. And the process is exactly the same. I don't think we'll learn anything new by going through it again. So it's exact same steps. So it's probably a good place to stop. We'll do one or two examples uh, next week on this, but it's not going to be in your midterm, so don't worry about the product sum, sum product.